Rabot, great, wonderful. All yours, Pupa. Before that, we just want to thank uh, our sponsor, Charlie Beta. Mr. and Mrs. Charlie Bader, who sponsored this event tonight in memory of his mother. One second, who also happens to be Pupa's aunt, which is a very nice thing. Uh, sponsored in memory of Alice by Regine Malka Beda. And the Shema should have an aliyah, and the whole family should only have blessings for many, many years to come. And she should be a zikhut for everyone. Uh, give us all blessings of good health and happiness. Amen. 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 Without further ado, please. Thank you. Is the rabbi speaking or I'm starting? No, I'm not speaking. I'm watching. I'm learning like everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, let's see if uh, there's something that I could possibly <laughs> say that you, you're not aware of. Uh, anyway, my first experience with uh, Tubishvat was when I was newly married, we would say the berachot, nuts, fruit, and do it one, two, three, and be on our way. But about 30 years ago, I have to say that my family and I were totally flabbergasted and awakened. We were in Yerushalayim, and we were at my cousin, Professor Rachami Melamed Kohen, Allah HaShalom's home. He was an amazing man uh, beyond anything we could think about, uh, even envision. He was stricken with Lou Gehrig's disease. And uh, as of like, I don't know, 20 years ago, he was given from the Israeli government uh, the computer that the Israeli fighters used and he was totally paralyzed, totally. All he could do was blink. And he was given a computer program from, for the, that the jet pilots, uh, pilots used. And just from blinking, he was enabled to create artwork. He was enabled to write books and just something fascinating. And so we went to his home for Tu Bishvat. His family, was there. His children were there. His grandchildren, guests, his siblings, all rel the apartment was jam-packed. And like Abad Yosef, he had over 30 different berachot to recite. And it was amazing. I would like to spin around and show you one of his pieces that we exhibited in a show that we did in my home as a fundraiser. And it's the seven species. Uh, here we are. Okay. So as you can see, it's the map of Israel and it's the seven species. We have the pomegranate, we have the dates, uh, the, fi uh, the figs, the wheat, I, barley, they're all there. Uh, the olives, like my husband's in the background reminding me. And this was something extremely special. We know that Tu B'Shvat is known as the festival of the new year. It's one of the four Rosh Hashanahs. It also enables us I felt like it was very relevant. But first, I'd like to say that my decision, my choice of what to prepare had a lot to do with my Auntie Alice, my mother's sister. She was married in Helab. I have a picture, hold on. Uh, we're still new with the, stop sharing. Okay. Okay. So my Aunt Elise was married in Helap. She's the bride. The one below her is my mother, Auntie Elise. Uh, my, my mother, Sedin Katana, Lapa Shalom. 
And uh, to the left of my auntie Alice is my grandmother regime. So Alice Bat Regime Malka. And it, it's an amazing picture, isn't it? And um, I chose the apricot balls because they're elegant. The pistachio and the apricots really reflect her heritage and our heritage and tradition. And it, it's a nice memory. And I was lucky enough. Oh, actually there's my grandfather also. And I was lucky enough to see my Auntie Alice uh, shortly before she passed. I'll also show you a recent picture. We're gonna get to the dessert, I promise. One second. They say you need patience. That's why we eat the figs. So everybody be patient. Joyce, this is for you. I have a picture of, here we go. Here's Auntie Alice and your dad. Joyce, you like that? Okay. And then we have some hair. Okay. One of the things that was very exciting about going to my cousin Rahamin's house is later on I learned that in Safat, they celebrated, they created what they called a Passover Seder. And they would rejoice and pray and sing and show gratitude. And that's exactly what happened in my cousin Rahamim's house. Uh, it was like a wedding. It was like a bar mitzvah. And we just couldn't get over it. We're coming from Deal or Brooklyn and we don't feel that way when it's too bishvat. We need to go to the Pierre <laughs> or something to feel like there's such a, a connection, such a celebration. And as I learned more and more about the segula behind all the berachot, I realized that this is an opportune moment to really connect to the holiday, like with every holiday has its meaning. And I'd like to go over the different berachot and I promise we'll get to the recipe. This is the apricot balls, but I'm afraid it's gonna tilt if I, I don't know. Could you see them? Okay, that's more or less. Here's one, they're beautiful, but we'll get to them. So I'd like to read to you a little bit about, hold on. Okay, one of the other things I wanted to say that was important is that more than ever this year, with the COVID and all the challenges that we have, the connection that we have spiritually and physically to nature is even more important than ever. Trees, air, nature, we, Hashem knows that man is like a tree. It's a tree of life. We're like, so by walking outside and looking at the trees this year, we could hold so much more meaning and really feel deep rooted and understand that Tu B'Shvat is all about growth. And this with COVID and being quarantined and not being able to go outdoors as much as we wanted to, we realized that this is an, an opportunity on this holiday to surpass all the restrictions and continue to grow, whether it's in Torah, whether it's in modesty, whether it's in working on Amidot, we have an opportunity to grow. And every holiday, the skies open up so we could really be heard. We should pray in our own words, go for a walk, go for a hike, do your hit bodet duk, pray to Hashem in your own words. This is the time. 
So I felt like it was very relevant. The other thing that I felt was very uh, connected, we're always talking about eating our greens, eating our greens and staying healthy. Rambam tells you, stay healthy so you could serve Hashem. Stay healthy so you could be a better person. Stay healthy so you could grow. Tu Bishvat is plant-based, by the way. So that's another good little point. But it's so much deeper than that. So, so much deeper. I didn't know until recently that we drink four cups of wine on the holiday. The first one for summer, the second one for spring, uh, autumn, that we have spring and winter. And each one has a significance. So I'd like to, I promise you, we'll get to the dessert. Uh, one second. Um, Okay, so the wine and fruits. Each one gives us a different level of spirituality. So when we have the first cup of white wine, it symbolizes the winter time, which is the lowest level of the fruits. It's a rough outside, like the pomegranate, like the walnuts, like uh, pistachios. Now, we have to know that what we pray for is that the rough exterior is just that. That's what it is. It's a rough exterior. And we have to pray that we're sweet like the pomegranate inside, that we're wise like the walnuts inside, like we're beautiful like the pistachios inside. Uh, my son-in-law recently told me sabra means rough. But a sabra is beautiful in spite. So let's drink spite wine and understand that we could do, we could be soft inside, but the rough on the outside has nothing to do with it. And then we have the next cup of wine is the white wine, but we mix just a drop of red, which signifies spring, the budding of a new life, dates and we pray to flourish like the palm tree. And then we go to the next cup of wine, which is the third cup, and that's the white with a small amount of red, uh, with more red, and that is that we want a perfect world. We want to be like a grape with no peel. When a grape has no peel, it's pure. That's why the women are told to eat grapes. The women are associated with vines because we all, we grow. So each one has a beautiful segula. And if we could keep that in mind when we're praying with the, for the berachot, it would make a very big difference. Carib uh, is a sign that we should be happy with our life because we could suffice on carrot for so with for so long. Rabbi, what do we have here? Rabbi Yochanan ben, ben Zakai stayed in the cave for twelve years, sufficing or sustaining his life on carrot. When we eat the carrot, we have to say we're happy with our lot. That we're happy carob? with carob. We're happy with our lot. We're not in competition. We're not looking over our shoulders or we're not looking for something else that we don't have. Uh, wonderful. So anyway, we'll, we'll start with the demonstration because I know that that's what you all want. But don't forget when we say ha it's that it's pure. We can eat the outside and the inside, and we should all strive to grow to be pure and wise. And also the ka'ak is wheat, and it's a great opportunity to pray for an abundant panasa, the wheat, may it flourish, may it give us wisdom. So that's a beauty. And the dates, of course, it's a time to pray that we should be like the palm tree and just go on and on, but do your research and don't underestimate the power of each prayer. 
Okay, so now we're gonna make the apricot balls. We're going to start with what else? Apricots. We'll put them in the blender. I'll have to get a drop of water. Hold on. The secret is not to put too much water because then they'll get mushy. Water could sometimes be, be a cook's worst enemy. So we're gonna put just like maybe a tablespoon, if that. And we're going to And while it's spinning, we're going to put some orange blossom water. And they, a holiday be fragrant. And they even say that the smell is extremely important. Okay, I think we have it. As simple as that. Sometimes the simplest recipes are the best. Could everyone see that? Okay. And now what we'll do is we're going to take pistachios that were put in the blender, not the chop roughly, not to put them in. We're going to put a little bit of cardamom. I, I suggested to everybody the cinnamon, but I changed my mind. We're doing the cardamom for the aroma. And then we're going to mix it. Hold on. Okay. and it gets mixed. And I actually have a batch that was mixed, which is right here. Now what we'll do, going to take the balls, and I like to use a measuring spoon. And I put a tablespoon, this is the easiest way to do it, and then you pop it out, mix it, I mean, make a ball. And then you have a choice. You could dip it in pistachio, you could dip it in cocoa, you could dip it in coconut. So we'll do the pistachio. So somebody's asking a question. Mm -hmm. They wanna know if we're using Turkish or California apricots. Turkish. Turkish, okay. But both are good. The California are excellent, no problem. Okay, now so far you added the cinnamon into the uh, into the blend, into the mix? I did, this, my recipe, I decided on the cardamom, but you okay. could put, look how easy. Could anything be easier than that? It's beautiful. Okay, so we got one. Then if you want, you take another one and you could put the cocoa. Like I said, I like to put it so they're all uniform. I take a uh, tablespoon and now the holiday, it's important to eat good, but please remember, do your research and understand the beauty of the four different cups of wine, the beauty of the different levels of the fruit. We have first the fruit, here, uh, what do we do? We did pistachio, we'll do cocoa. First, we have the fruit that has no peel, which is the purest, which is the grape, the wine. It's associated with women. No, I'm not just saying that, it's true. And I like to put a little gold on this because as we know, we definitely eat with our eyes. How pretty is that? And we'll put maybe a pistachio. Where's my hair there? Put a little pistachio. Joyce, I feel like you would like this. 
And okay, so that was that. And then we have, if we want, we could, I don't know what happened to my grounded coconut, but. Okay, so now we can ask questions. Should I unmute myself? Papa, yes. can you use a melon baller instead of the tablespoon? Oh, absolutely. Probably better, but you know me. Now, what I like to do, like I'll improvise. I don't have a melon baller in, uh, in Miami. If I had one, I probably would have used it. Hold on one second, I'm gonna wash my hands. <laughs> What I like about this recipe is that it's raw. And so many of us today are like, you know, the new wave, we're all into raw, raw, raw. So here's some chocolate. And I'm going to, uh, actually you can't see me doing it, but I'm going to shave some chocolate and put it on here. And then I'll show it to you. And it really is the most, it's so simple, yet so beautiful at the same time. So, and then we have the pomegranate. And I have a beautiful quote for the pomegranate, which, talks about speech. Pomegranate is so closely related to how we speak. That our mouths should only have sweet words come from them. Okay, so any questions? Opa? Yes. Hello. Hi. How, how, what was the measurement? Thank you very much. What was the measurement of the apricot and, and also the pistachio? Okay, so How I- How much apricot did you use? Okay, I posted the recipe on Instagram or it's out there. I don't measure. So I have to tell mm -hmm. you, I don't know it by heart. Okay. But it's there. Right. And if, if not, I'll send it to you, but I know it's on Instagram. Is that good? Okay. my my. My iPad froze. I froze. It's okay. I'll figure it out. Yeah. It's Thank you. That's my biggest problem. I have to tell you, when I was working on my original cookbook, the biggest problem was that I couldn't measure anything. So I had to have some people come over and do the, you know, take, watch me and do the recipe so that they could figure out the measurements. Even till now, I didn't have the patience to do measurement. So... But it's there. Guilty. Hmm? Guilty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guilty as served. Here's the coconut chips. I, I like to buy the big chips because I end up putting some in the grinder and making it pulverized like this. But then it's so nice to have a visual of what something actually is and then put it on it. And that's like a nice thing to do. It tells the story. People like to know sometimes exactly what they're eating. Well, so, what is the honey for? Oh, I forgot. We, we <coughs> add honey to the mixture. Oh, oh okay. No. okay. And yeah. I use raw honey. Okay. I use raw honey. Okay. Good it's good it's associated with the better for the dates. That okay, we're going to redo it. You can have a sweet life. And here's... Wait. Mom, do, do you have the video, the screen, the yeah. slideshow? What do you mean, the video? The slideshow. Are you showing that? Oh, yes, yeah, Sherry. Should I show the slideshow? Yeah, that's a good move. Okay, let's do the slideshow. Hold on. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. <laughs> uh -huh. Wait a second. It's just, you know, the holiday has so many intricacies. It's amazing. 
There's it, the other. Okay, yeah. Okay, the slideshow is just a slideshow. That's uh, the first picture was uh, pomegranate juice in Israel, actually. Those are my pomegranate pictures. with saying that this year, Tu B'Shvat, is an opportune time to connect with nature more than ever. Hashem blessed us with trees. In fact, I read that if we were going to war and there was a tree to be planted, the tree should get planted first. Or if they, oh no, no, I read that if someone knew that Mashiach was coming, and there was a tree to be planted, we needed to plant the tree first. Uh, how important it is to appreciate nature. And we like to see the silver lining and everything that happens. Maybe this challenging time gave us an opportunity to reassess our opportunities to be outdoors, our opportunities to understand nature and associate the trees with growth. If there was any time of the year that you want, would like to grow in any area of your life, this is when it's an etz basal. This is when it's a time to pray for that assistance. And I'll go yes. back to uh, He tells you, you must be healthy in order to serve Hashem. You must be healthy to have shalom bayit. You must be healthy to have friends. You must be healthy to have more choices in life. Like we said before, Tu B'Shvat is a time that we can eat plant-based, we can eat healthy, we could understand the beautiful produce. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if anyone has any questions about the recipe, please, the recipe or any other questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Beautiful, Pupa. You did that. Thank you. Bravo. Yeah. <laughs>